Okay, so today I thought we'd have a change. I did say we'd go to Skipton, but we're not going to Skipton because I'm skint. So there you go. But why we don't need to go anywhere really because in Burnley, where I was born, there's a plethora of things that you can go and see. And Burnley has a little hidden gem, and this is the first one. Between the ages of 5 and 12, 13, I spent every waking hour in this beautiful place. And this beautiful place is Townley Hall Park in Burnley. So this, back in the day, would have probably been the main causeway, bridleway up to Townley. The road which you come up to now, you come up and down here from Tomadin Road in Burnley. This road is closed off now. Townley have lots of things on in the year, classic car shows, all sorts of events. They all go on this field down here. Over there is Cliviger Village. We used to camp out down near the river down the bottom there. Just up this road here, through the trees to the right, is Vincent's Garden Centre, or what I think is now Townley Garden Centre. But the main attraction when we were kids were the woods and this beautiful hall. Look at that. Isn't that a scene out of a Hollywood movie? Absolutely stunning building. This lake that you can see in front of it, when I was a child, was just a round pond. It had reeds in, there were all sorts of things in. You used to have frogs, tadpoles, you name it. We used to love it as kids. It was fantastic. Yes, so Townley Hall, named after the Townley family. I don't actually know what century or year the hall was built. But I do know that the Townley family settled on the site in the time of Richard de Townley in 1295. Charles Townley, who was born in 1737, he inherited the estate in 1758 and made alterations to the hall and the grounds. I'd love to know what sort of renovations he did. But we'll have a walk round and I'll tell you what's changed since I was a child coming up here. The golf club's there, which me and my chums from work go and play very badly, I have to admit. It really is a hidden gem, and if you live close by in Blackburn or Accrington or and you've never been to Townley, I do recommend you come for the afternoon. You can full, fill a full day here in a, on a beautiful sunny day quite easily. It's a fantastic park. There's absolutely all sorts of things to do. As you come through the gates there, there's a notice board with a map. Lots of wood trails to walk round. These days there's wooden sculptures in the woods. But we'll make our way to the front of Townley Hall. It really is... When you were a little boy like I was, going back up in the 70s, there were no computers, we had to read books and look at pictures. That's why we were all intelligent and all the kids today are thick. We could spell because we used to use a pen and some paper. Not our finger. But anyway, I digress. If it was made in 1295, I'd love to know how they made the glass because I didn't think glass came into being until the 17th century. Although I do know that they used to use animals' hooves to make a, a type of glass. But when you're a child, like I used to be, this place, which to be honest does look like a castle, doesn't it? Is the exact picture, I think, of what young kids picture a castle to look like. Because as you know, they never do look like what they're supposed to in real life. There are tours, you can go on tours of the building. I don't know whether they still do, but they used to take you on the ramparts of the roof and they used to take you into the 
cellars, which we used to think were dungeons when we were kids. I'm not going to go inside the hall. If you do want to go in, there's a five pound charge on the door, but that will get you in the hall for 12 months. I'll live for 12 months. A lot of the flowers have grown over now. All this was clear when we were kids, that door was perfectly visible. Because at this side, there should be some steps. There should be some steps around here going down. Can't see them from here. Obviously underneath here, there's not dungeons or anything like that, but the wine cellars, also all the servants rooms, where the servants used to go. The kitchen, for instance, you go down some steps here and the kitchen is just around about in the middle of the, the hall, in the basement. But it really is a phenomenal piece of architecture. I wish I could find out what year it was built. But yeah, there should be some steps going down. Not there anymore. All this ivy has grown on since I was a child. That was all clean. So we'll have a look round the side of the, the hall. There's all sorts of little things like this as you go around the park these days. All sorts of little information boards. Have a look at that, you can pause it bit by bit. But if you go around here, there's a beautiful little garden which in summer looks incredible, absolutely incredible. And also, if you come up on a lovely bright sunny evening, just as the sun's going down, all the little rabbits, the wild rabbits, come on here and they all graze. They don't have in human beings about doesn't seem to affect them. <laughs> Up there, in the, if you go in the hall, these are all the, the bedrooms. And believe me, there's some really uh, peculiar beds, I can tell you. I certainly wouldn't like to. I'd rather have slept on the floor. You'll probably see through the windows as we keep walking past. There's lots of sculptures. There's one of the Townley family whose name escapes me. He was into fine art and sculpture. And he actually went on the grand tour and spent years in Italy with a lot of sculptures. And I think, to the best of my memory, he actually bought and brought back to England one of the finest sculpture collections that the country has nowadays. But yes, there's lots of bare bottoms and bosoms in Townley Hall. <laughs> There's a commemorative sundial. That's fairly new. That's been put up in recent years. Richard Townley, 1676. And this is the park. Well, this used to be a... When I was growing up, in fact, I can't really see where it was. There used to be the remains of it. But over here, there used to be a tiny little slide. Everybody used to fight to get on it. I want to get on it. I want to get on it. And then, of course, when you were a child, you want to throw stones in the river. So when you came up with your mother and dad, you used to try and sneak to the back here. It was just down there. There's a little stream. You see it down the bottom there? You used to come up here and get filthy. I loved it. You couldn't beat it. But there's the back of the hall. very picturesque. You could quite easily uh, put Downton Abbey in these surroundings. Although probably not historically correct, is it? But yeah. I think the park comprises of 62 acres altogether. And as I said, there are a lot of walks, which one of which I'm going to take you on right now. But uh, It was the Townley family's estate for 
centuries and then it passed over to O'Hagan and it was eventually sold, the whole estate, the hall, everything was eventually sold by Lady O'Hagan to Burnley Council in 1902 it has two very very special things does the hall it has the vestments inside for Wally Abbey but it also has its own chapel and the chapel believe me is something you really must see whether you're young or old it's gobsmacking it really is it's a big wooden I don't know what it's carved out of actually but it was made in 1525 in Antwerp and shipped over here and I'm just walking, you'll see the chapel window as I'm walking up to it now. You can't actually get around the side anymore because the renovations which were paid for by the Lottery Fund in 2005 they've actually built a gift shop on here. The servants' quarters used to be here. It's very noisy, isn't it? I'm blowing some leaves about. But there's the chapel window. There's a monk hall in the chapel. Two or three monk halls in the chapel, uh, around the hall one of which is in the staircase it must have been fantastic coming out here in summer evening in 1600 with your wife with a ball going on because you were holding a ball here's another little sign look telling you all about the, the Wayside Arts Trail which you can go and see and we'll go for a little walk in the woods now and I'll take you somewhere where we used to go when we were kids and we all knew what it were but people nowadays might be a bit lost so we'll walk up there and I'll point it out see you when we get there So, we've just walked up from Townley Hall, which is down there, and now we're going to go here, up this little path. You see it all covered over with leaves, everything. And if we go up here, there's a little surprising store that not many people know about. Old brick path up. Go up these old steps. And on the top here we have absolutely nothing because it's disappeared. Now this place really has grown over. If I explain more in a second when we get to the top. Because at the top we have Highroyd Field. Now, this is Highroyd Field, which now, as you can see, is the pitch and putt course. And let me tell you, it's a cracking little pitch and putt course. It's 18 holes, I don't think it's expensive. You get your bat and ball or your club from a little hut which is just down the corner there near to where the entrance of the golf club is just as you walk into the woods but this used to be high road field and back in the day people used to come here for picnics I can imagine them because they would have only had one day a week off back then which was Sunday a religious day I can imagine them coming up here for Sunday afternoon and then there would be tret by something that used to go on here here believe it or not <coughs> was the Massey Music Pavilion and it was opened in 1929 these steps aren't actually steps they're actually tears. What the people used to sit on in chairs, if you can see. 
and go along there. Nature is reclaimed, as they say. But yeah, here used to be Massey's Music Pavilion, 1929. But unfortunately in 1963 it set on fire. And the council never rebuilt it, unfortunately. I can imagine it must have been a fantastic place. I did find a picture on the net of it. I will see if I can put it on so you can see what it was like in all its glory. You used to have bands here, but not just bands. You used to have rallies and demonstrations. Or as Fred Dibner used to say, a demonstration. <laughs> yeah. Must have, oh, did you see that little squirrel doing a runner? It must have been a phenomenal little place. It was all along here. When I was growing up, all this is like was like black stones. I don't know if you can still see it underneath. Well, I can, but you may not be able to. And all this was clear when I was growing up. These these, these trees weren't here. These have these have grown since I've grown up. There was nothing here. It was all black with steps. And the bandstand was still partially there. I think they took it down in the 1990s because it was unsafe or something like that. They always claim it's unsafe when they want to get rid of something, don't they? Suit the needs. But yeah, it probably was to be fair. Just trolling through the woods, getting stabbed to death by these raspberries. Yeah, it must have been a phenomenal place. And all these tears down. And the music pavilion, the bands blaring away. People maybe having a dance where standing on dancing on the spot. I mean you can see how impressive it was. Just by looking at the staircase. It was impressive. And I remember the building. You see the curve going up there. The building was over here. And it was flat on top. You could walk on top of it. It had a stone roof. When I was going up. We used to, in fact, I remember actually coming up to see a couple of brass bands with my dad on a Sunday. In there when you used to go to the pub. And then when he came home, my father, this used to be the old road leading up to it, look, would have come down here from the path at the top. Lots of things hiding everywhere today. You've got to look for them. Bit of a giveaway with the wall there, like. But yeah. That used to be the old bandstand in Townley. Fantastic little place. So we'll carry on walking up the hill to the shelter. So we've just walked to the top of that path and we're uh, still going uphill. Everywhere in Burnley you walk uphill. You go to the shop, you walk uphill. You walk back home from the shop, you walk uphill. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> this takes you up to where there's a few activities and also the golf club so we'll have a walk up there nothing takes long to get to in town really. not if you're a brisk walker so that's the path we've just come down pitch and put courses here a little cabin to get your ball and your club is over there. Townley is also wicked when you're uh, a little child because there are dozens and dozens, this time of year, conquer trees. Dozens and dozens. I know where, well, I do know where dozens and dozens are, seeing as I spent all my youth up here. But if you come from the hall and you go up that path, you turn right, which brings you down to the little pitch and put hut there, look. It is open today. Used to be a little tiny garden shed. Look at it now. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with a little shed. But that's where you get on. If you come down of the pitch and put and go straight across the way. The bridle way comes out here for the horses. And if you go across the way, you end up at two little bowling greens. Well, not very little, but two bowling greens. We 
we actually in the closing hours of the pubs was uh, oh look somebody's left some conkers are they coming back for him are we to nick him no we won't do that <laughs> but yeah there's uh, two two uh, bowling greens tennis courts there's a picnic area which I'll take you to a garden centre you've got the museum you can go and have a look in which is the hall, Townley Hall it really is splendid on a summer's day we used to come back when the pubs used to shut at 3 o'clock on a Sunday we got fed up of being locked in the pub so we used to we came up here just for a laugh one day and we sat on a, a form across the way and watched the pensioners play and then one of them came up and said, would you like to play? And uh, we said, oh yes, please. So they taught us how to play because they waited at the, the bowling uh, bowls. You need to know where to put the weight to move them from left to right. These look a bit knackered now, don't they? There's be three tennis courts here. These could be when we've kept up a bit. So yeah. need repairing don't they? Yes the uh, the pitch and put course was opened in uh, 1967 as I say it was on Highroyd Field the music pavilion opened in 1929 and there is another bowling green in Townley it was opened much earlier than these uh, these two I've just shown you They were opened in 1924, but the other one, which is down near the hall, was opened in 1903, and you'll probably see why. I know you're now saying they only saw one bowling green. <laughs> Murder on this internet, aren't you? So there's the other one. This is the one most people seem to play on, actually. That's why it looks like it needs a bit of TLC, and they do get TLC. Very often the players come up and look after the, the bowling greens, but up townly they'll have the head gardener. So I'll just have a little wander up here. I'll show you our fantastic golf club. So yeah. You've got Townley Golf Club where me and the boys from work come and play some very bad golf. There's the first tee down there and there's the 18th green coming up. This is the 10th. When I was a 20 year old I could get it to that ditch down there. You can't get it anywhere near now. But if you're coming up the main drag from Townley you can see Turf Moor from here, the football green. But you come up this road down the bottom here, which takes you to the road on the left that I pointed to, and up to Townley Hall. So I'll head off back down to the hall and show you a couple of other little things. See you back down there. Actually, just before we nip on back down to the hall, I'm now on the path that when you you come into the car park of the golf club. This is the old servants' entrance to the, the hall. This has been here a few hundred years. But this is the main servants' entrance and uh, common people entrance. But you will notice, if you ever come here, you will notice that they do have some very old, I guess what they are, because they're not electric. They're all gas lamps. And you will notice every so often on this path that goes down to the hall, the hall, only on this path, you will notice gas lamps every so often. And that is because, there's another one there, look. And that is because back in the day, when it was dark, and you probably had one or two robbers pillaging and things like that, but back in the day, 
they thought that some of the staff might get mugged or, you know, sexually assaulted, raped and things like that. So they put these gas lamps in. And also on top of that, when it was a female member of staff, they had to wait at the top there till a male member of staff from the hall came and met them. And they chaperoned them through the park. I didn't actually know that. But uh, we're going to turn right here and start to go back on ourselves because this is the path that we came down to the pitch and put course. When we get back to the T junction where we turn right, I'll put you back on. So I'll see you in a sec. So that's where we came from. That's where we came from originally. We came up, we went up there, up to the golf club, the pitch and put. Then we've got the shelter. And now we're going to go up here. Another path. This bridge has been reconstructed since I grew up. This used to be a, a cheaply made little wooden bridge. This river goes up to a tunnel. And if you're a little kid and you come up here, you can get in. But it doesn't go anywhere, I can tell you. Because I've already been in it a long, long time ago. Probably can't get in it now. Impossible to get anywhere when you're a kid these days. Spoiled all the fun. Being from a pre... well, being from a... still feeling the effects of the post-war era, when I grew up, there was lots of things to get dirty with when I was a kid. Places that were bombed in the war. Well, there was only two bombs in Burnley, but... <coughs> places that had fallen into disrepair because of the war were still falling down in Burnley. We still had lots of chimneys blowing smoke out, even though the Clean Air Act had been passed. I can remember seeing dozens and dozens of chimneys. Now the top end of Townley, we're right at the top now, near Tomadin Road. This is the picnic area. And it's a lovely little place. Many people come here. Plenty to do for the kids there. Yeah, I can't say they can get bored in Townley Park. There's absolutely all sorts to do. Over the hill, the Tomadin Road running up here, and then you've got a bank, then you've got the railway line that runs through to Tomadin. And then next to the railway line, you have, well, you have a housing estate now, but uh, years and years and years ago, that was Townley Colliery, which uh, I think, to the best of my knowledge, was sunk in the late 1860s. And it was sunk next to Brooks and Pickup's fire clay clay works. We used to go up there when we were kids and we were still finding clay pottery was, uh, and bricks, clay bricks. We found thousands and thousands of clay bricks. Yeah. And that's just less than half a mile away from the railway station, which I pointed out. In 1947, it ran until 1947, so when the National Coal Board took over. And guess what? Guess what happened in 1949? The National Coal Board closed it. How surprising! <laughs> but the railway station, as you saw, still remains to this day. And the signal box is actually still moving the signals for the trains. Still, uh, still a working signal box even today. There's another map. So we'll head on back out the picnic area. Signage is very good in Townley. Signs all over the bloody place. Now we come to the, the centre of the hall. 
and you'll see what I mean when we come out to this cross. If you look down this path here, there you go, smack bang to the centre of that doorway down the bottom. You see it? How beautiful would that have looked when you had your crinoline dress on and you had your big two-ton suit with your, your top hat. But yes, this is uh, Foldish Cross and there's a little prank there restored by Burnley Corporation. The translation at the bottom Pray for the soul of John Foldy's chaplain who caused this cross to be made in the year of our Lord, 1520. Wow, 1520. And the Latin inscription that it's talking about is on the bottom there. That's in the Latin inscription. And there's Jesus on the cross at the top. I'm not a religious person, but everybody to their own. You've got to believe in something. So I'll have a one down to this path and I'll tell you a little bit more about the surroundings around the hall. So you've just seen the time lapse go down there to the uh, little bridge. But we're going to turn left. But uh, I'll show you something about the little bridge later and show you where that ends up coming out. But we'll turn left at the bottom. This takes you back to the side. Oh, a little squirrel. There's no red squirrels anymore. And blooming Americans, they've invaded and taken over. Killed all our beautiful little red squirrels. As you had an air rifle. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, we're just going to take a walk round to this Beautiful little spot there. If you can see it through the trees. Beautiful little bowling green. <coughs> One of the best conker trees ever. Look at the size. I don't know if you can see the size of them conkers. But you get massive conkers off this tree. And they do grow quite low down. If you can get there before all the rest of the kids, they're very low down, they're on these branches here. It's not hard to throw something up to knock them loose and get them down. There's one there, and if I remember rightly, there's another one just a little bit further down there on the left as well. Oh, what's that say? The mystery trail this way. <laughs> That's what Townley's missing, isn't it? It's nearly October. We have a historic hall in Burnley. And the council, being the council, have no intuition, nobody with any imagination. Think of the scarefest attractions you could have up here. Now, the little picket fence, which I also showed you in the time lapse, which you see up there, that used to be quite a high fence. That is actually the nature reserve. And I can't remember the name of the gentleman. Well, we actually went through there when we were kids. Got some batteries for our torches and we actually went in there. It comes out uh, just over here. Don't do that, children. <laughs> we, were, uh, we were of a different era when we were kids. That's the sort of things we used to do. These are cool, aren't they? Should have another one for dumping. <clears throat> but yeah, we used to climb these two trees here. Now this is very open here. Now, there used to be a lot of rhododendron bushes. They used to cover all this. You couldn't see the hall. You can see it there. We end up back at the rear end, rear of the hall. But all this here, these all used to be rhododendron bushes. This is where all the rabbits live. There are hundreds of rabbits up here. So they're obviously got plans for this bit. You see the wood pigeon on the fountain over there? As you can see, it's having a bath. Oh, away it goes. 
Well, you know, some of the day out. Oh, there's all signs in there. This is all new. The signs of progress, eh? I don't know what you at home think. <clears throat> but in today's world, we just seem to be ruining all these historic places we've got. I mean, this was lovely, walking down here in summer, enclosed on both sides. It was lovely. The rabbits, when she came up at dusk, the rabbits would be flipping, flitting across here, left, right and centre. Talk about rabbits have rabbits. Rabbits have rabbits have rabbits. Another sign. Some balloons on this tree. My goodness, what's going on? But yeah, you see, where, there's the hole. You come down to this beautiful, that's beautiful there, isn't it? It's very picturesque. Oh, Japonicus, Euonymus Japonicus, Gold Queen. But yeah, you come through this little gate and you come out onto the old bowling green. Which has been here since 1903. And in summer, it's a lovely place to be. I've come up after the pub and sat on here many a day. I got myself burnt. There's the friends meeting room. If you're elderly and you're feeling a little bit lonely and you're bored, because you're at home watching me on my vlog on the internet. Ring that number. And I think you'll be welcome to the friends meeting room. Even more so if you play bowls. There's a little clubhouse. And the old entrance. I remember that when I was a child. You could come in up there or down there where we were just were. Lots of commemorative vent benches, which my uh, my great uncle, who's really not my great uncle, just my dad's best friend, and that is a good friend. Of, well, was a good friend, Mr. John Whippe. Hey, what a decorator! I used to do the plastering, and he used to call my plastering to hell. He used to call me slug dog or slug diggle. Oi, slug dog, get that bloody wall busted. No, but it doesn't look like we've got one called Raymond Farrer, Evelyn Tomlinson. No. No. Very nice though. All the benches in here are commemorative. Of course, you don't get them for nothing. You have to pay the initial cost. And then you have to pay towards the upkeep of your bench every year. Which I suppose is... Uh, only right, really. Just having a quick look. Graham Miller. No. I'll get a cup of tea. All the bowls and everything's kept in there. This is tea room. Read a book if you want. And there's some pictures on the wall on the back of the bowling teams from past and present. And these here, kids. If you want spreading plants in your garden, don't ever put any seeds in your dad's garden. He'll go bananas, unless he's got some. These spread like wildfire. See these little things here? Where have they gone? See that there? There? That's a seed. Oh, I think we'll go try a little over here. Yes, it even has a loo. So, try to break over. Let's go on there. Uh, Back into the hall, I'll point a few more things out. For example, this here. This used to be a little nature reserve where we used to come and had newts and toads, frogs. There's an old pond. We used to have tadpoles and all things. I've never been down here. This is new. It's close today. There we go. 
clear sessions. Very good. Permaculture project. Yeah. Come and share offshoots vision for the future. Yeah, look at that bird. That's cool, isn't it? Although, I uh, don't know what the idea of the totem poles is. So, could have carved some British sort of stuff, couldn't they? Like some castle rampart, you know, the turret in wood. You get, look at these, you see these here? You see, you know, everybody bypasses things like this. These are handmade bricks, these. You can tell quite easily. Firstly, they're very, very thin and they're always longer and they're very brittle compared to what we are used to up here in north our old Aquinton brick car park for the gardeners all the gardening uh, where they look after the plants and everything the horticultural side of the hall is all down there I'll show you that after but we're going to go to one of the nicest cenotaphs I think I've ever seen and it's right here right next to the park there we go look at that So this is the cenotaph, unveiled in 1926 to commemorate World War I. But then, obviously, we had World War II, so it commemorates World War II as well. Three guys on the top represent the Army, the Air Force and the Navy. The bottom's made out of granite, you've got the two marble figurines and then you've got the main pillar, which is made out of Portland stone. The lady on the left here, that's the figure of a mother carrying a wreath. The lady on the right is a sister or a wife, and she's carrying a garland. Unveiled in 1926, obviously for the First World War, but now we commemorate the Second World War with it as well. It's possibly one of the nicest cenotaphs that I've ever seen. I used to hold Remembrance Sunday up here when I was little. I used to come up with my dad. have a little brass band playing and things like that. And we had loads of little crosses in the grass here in a little commemorative garden. But they don't do that anymore. They do that downtown, which is such a shame. And they've got such a phenomenal piece of architecture right in our own back garden. It really is. Stunning, stunning piece of sculpture. You've got the Navy there, and you've got the Army in the middle, and you've got the Air Force, and you've got the bereaved sister or wife and at this side, you've got the bereaved mother. carrying a wreath. Still got the little crosses on from last year. Nice to see some respect still alive today. And then you've got the inscription which says this monument was erected in memory of the men of Burnley who gave their lives for their fellow countrymen in the Great War 1914 to 1918. Make them to be numbered with thy saint's glory everlasting. The monument stands also in honour of those who died for our freedom in 1939 
1945. Obviously, the last two lines have been added later. If you come round the back of the cenotaph, there's also an inscription. The sum necessary for the erection of this memorial was bequeathed by Caleb Thornber, a former mayor and alderman of this borough, to ensure that the sacrifice commemorated should never be held in great should ever be held in grateful remembrance. A garden of remembrance was provided by the townspeople of Burnley. So the monument itself was managed by a guy called Walter Gilbert and the bronze figurines they were cast in Cheltenham it really is a beautiful uh, statue and I've just noticed that down here as well as well as a wreath she's got her husband's cricket bat and balls of course back in World War One football wasn't uh, wasn't all the rage cricket was all the rage cricket was the national sport I say dear boy that's not cricket but it is an absolutely beautiful beautiful little remembrance garden so I'll just have a minute of silence just to commemorate and listen to the beautiful surroundings around the cenotaph Just one last thing, I just remembered the height of the cenotaph is 20 foot. Well, that doesn't mean much, but to some people it may do. So we'll just head on over to the other side of the hall, just explain a few things there, and we'll wrap this vlog up. So we'll leave the cenotaph behind, just walk through this little gap and around the front of the hall. This tree here doesn't do it justice on the camera. But this tree here, I've always thought, is simply stunning. The branches have got so long that the gardeners have had to strap it, strap the end of the, the branches to the main trunk of the tree. Otherwise the branches would have snapped off by now. But when you see it from the other side, it looks stunning. The fountain is spraying up. That was a very late addition to the fountain, I think in the 1970s or something like that. I may be wrong on that. But yeah, it looks simply stunning, does this tree. I'm tree mad, aren't I? Go mad with trees at Alton Towers, mad with trees at Townley. Now there's a... My God, look at the blokes there. If you're not a bird lover, the blokes are the green heads and the women are all brown with bits of blue. As you can see, even on a half decent day, there's plenty of people about. But we'll just walk across the centre. Now across here, this building here, used to be the uh, cart and carriage house along with the stables as you can see over there there's an old trough all the bit that juts out there with the game sign on and you can tell the new stone on the new building all that is fresh built with lottery money in 2005 
That was never there when I grew up. You used to be able to walk the whole way around the park. But down here. There's the old trough where the horses drank out of. And these were the old stables. They've been uh, they've been cut down a lot since I was a child. They used to have a big veranda. It actually used to come out to this wall here. There was a big veranda up to about 12 foot and a big glass roof on. This conservatory bit is an extension that's been added since I was a child. And it was shut for most of my childhood. But on the end here, which isn't there anymore, is the door still there? Oh, there it is. That used to be the ice cream shop. And it was an ice cream shop from 1903. Probably not anymore, as they don't seem to care about history anymore, do they? But yeah, that's changed. Taking a lot of the character out of, uh, out of the old architecture. A lot of character. Everything's ruined with modernisation. Here's the menu. You fancy something to eat? Doesn't seem that bad in there. Six pounds, five pounds, six pounds. Sounds about right, doesn't it? So there you have it. Down on the end here, where we're walking now, is the exit to the park. And if you turn, I recommend, if you turn right at the exit here, and you walk along the bottom where you can park your car, it is pain display. If you can see down the bottom there, the best trail go for a, a nice walk. It's where those people are. Down there. You go through the gate at the bottom and that's called Vanet Lee Wood. Now that never used to belong to the park. That wasn't part of the 62 acres. That was added later. I think in the 1930s that was open to the public. And you can walk all around the trail and you can come back out at the gate there in a circular tour. It takes a good 20 minutes, half an hour. Or you can carry on and where the time-lapse footage was on the vlog with the caution written above the bridge. That's where you can come out, to the back of the hall, just up there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, it's Townley Hall, a hidden gem. It's an absolutely beautiful place to come for the afternoon and in summer you can't move on this green here. It's just filled with people. It really is a spectacular little place. So, another view of the hall in all its splendour. So there we have our little tour of Townley Hall, or Townley Hall Park. I'm ready to head on home now. Head on home and have some tea. Hope you've enjoyed our, our little take on Townley. It's a fantastic afternoon out. You can pack the afternoon and you can easily do a full day. Bring some sandwiches, a picnic. Kids can play tennis. 
and go down to the river, take the socks and shoes off, paddle like I used to do. Mucky water, but in my day, that's what you did, mucky water. So for now, <clears throat> from the old servants exit and entrance, I'll say my fond farewells. Be good, take care of each other. Subscribe if you like the video. If you didn't like it, don't subscribe. I don't care. See you later, people.